Let's take a look and see what exactly comes in the box. The first thing I'm going to do is check the box label to make sure that I have the right part. It is a V1020 WIR-360. Let me spin the box around and open it up and see what's inside. I'll remove the loose items on the top and get them out of our way. Now let's magically unpack the whole box. Well, that was easy. Now we've got our camera, and as you can see, I'm using a piece of the packing styrofoam to support it while I'm working with it. We also have a package of pre-made and labeled connectors. These are our audio in, audio out, alarm in and out, and 24 volt AC slash DC power connector, if you're not using power over ethernet. This bag has the hardware for surface mounting along with our security Allen wrench. And in here are two spare grommets. This is the quick start guide and the surface mounting template. If we take a quick tour around the camera, we'll see a couple of different things. First, the top cap slash mounting plate is held in place with a single screw. We simply unscrew that and then twist to the open position to gain access to the inside. There's also an electrical conduit port and the top of the cap is an inch and a half male threaded connector for connection to our wall arm, pendant, and parapet mounts. I'll go ahead and take the security Allen wrench out of the bag because according to the quick start guide, the first thing that I need to do is to remove the shipping foam inside the bubble. So I'm going to remove all the screws around the bubble. Now remove the bubble carefully because there is an electrical connection that goes to the center of the bubble to power the IR illuminators. Carefully reach inside and disconnect this connector from the IR unit. Once you have it off, we can go ahead and remove the four pieces of packing material. One, two, three, and four. It might be a good idea to save these inside the box just in case. I'll go ahead and reconnect the IR electrical connection, place the bubble back in place, and then I'll go ahead and tighten those screws. First, I'll tighten until they're just snug, and then I will fully tighten them in a crisscross pattern. There is a piece of plastic protecting the bubble, but I want to go ahead and show you the 360 degree IR illumination section of the bubble. For now, we'll cover this back up just to protect the bubble while we're working with the camera. Now I'm going to undo the locking screw and this will allow me to then twist the cap to the unlocked position, as you see there, and now I can remove the cap. You can see the twist lock mounting lugs on the camera body and how they made up to the mounting plate. We can also see the screw hole where the locking screw goes into place. Now I'm going to remove the safety lanyard And if you're doing a surface mount, you'll need to remove the four screws holding the mounting plate to the cap. The flat side of the mounting plate would go against the ceiling or the cap, depending on your mounting method. There is also a front marking on this mounting plate for the front of the camera, and that matches up with the Vicon logo on the camera body as well. Like the packing foam, be sure to save those four screws or screw them back into the cap as you might need them in the future. In the center of the camera, we see an access plate with two grommets, one solid and one with a hole in it. 
This is for passing through an unterminated Ethernet cable. In the spare bag, there is another grommet with a hole in it that you could use to replace the solid one. You would do this if you were using audio, alarms, or direct power. Then you would pass an unterminated multi-conductor wire through that grommet and make connection to the connectors I'm about to show you. We'll take the access cover off and look inside and we see all of our connectors for alarm in, alarm out, audio in, audio out, and we provide for you the pre-made cables to use for these functions. These cables and connectors should not be passed through the grommet. Instead, you want to bring in your unterminated wire through the grommets and make the connections under the access port cover. Each of the lead connectors is slightly different, so it's virtually impossible to place the wrong connector in the wrong position. Also notice that there are two micro SD card slots. If you put cards in both slots, the total storage will be summed together. Once you've passed all the wires through the access plate and made your connections, the access plate should be replaced. Notice it is keyed and only goes on one way. Secure the three screws that hold it in place. Now we can take a closer look at our mounting plate. And again, we see the front marker, which will match up also with the logo on the front of the camera. I'm going to reconnect my lanyard and I'm going to place this back in place and lock it. This would be my final configuration if I was doing a surface mount. I just wanted you to see what it looks like without the cap on top, which is used when you're mounting to a wall arm, pendant, or parapet mount.